Do you mind if we forego the whole creepy serial killer thing here? Sure, it's good with me. I mean, I can turn it on if you want. But I can talk about the Dada's patterns of arterial spray. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and it's been an interesting couple of weeks for fans of the Venom movie series. We've, we've gotten a lot of uh, tidbits. We finally have a name for the sequel movie and a date. And here to talk with me about that is the proprietor of Venom Vlog on YouTube, C. What's going on, buddy? Not much, Wes. Thanks for having me back, man. Social media had a little bit of a meltdown when they finally announced the name for the Venom movie. I think you know a lot of people were had hopes of what it might be, and we got Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Right. Not quite as bad as The Phantom Menace to me, but it's sure. certainly not The Empire Strikes Back by any means. Uh, yeah, I mean, sure. I, I think what they're going for, though, I think this is, um, because I'm, I'm critical of the title, too. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I would have just been happy with something like Venom versus Carnage or something simple like that. I know a lot of people want the title Maximum Carnage, uh, but for me, if you're going to do Maximum Carnage, you should base it off that book, and that book is, is bigger than what this story seems to be. So you don't want to call the first appearance of Carnage in a movie Maximum Carnage unless... Morbius is in it and Spider-Man's in it and all these other characters. That's kind of their their big event book, you know, essentially. So uh, so it's good to save that title for something later. But what this title does scream to me is that, because uh, a lot of people are like, oh, we want to rate it. Like, I see a lot of fans like, I want rated R. You can't do Carnage unless he's rated R. And it's like, well, Carnage, 95% of his existence in comics has been in T-rated comics. Uh, and he's been in a lot of uh, cartoons for kids. So you're actually wrong. Most, the majority of Carnage stories are told for like, you know, teenagers and a younger in mind. So to sit there and say you can only do them in R is the stupidest thing I've ever heard uh, when it comes to this fandom. Uh, but then on top of that, uh, they have uh, this title that, is setting the tone so it's letting you know hey this is probably going to be goofy like the first one was like the first one had straddled this line of of tongue-in-cheek and and, and kind of goofiness that uh that captures the 90s essence of some of the comics really well and that seemed to work because now you know that movie made 850 million dollars uh on a hundred hundred million dollar budget uh, so it clearly made a huge profit for sony so that seemed to work so they're probably going to stick with that kind of tone. So yeah, Cletus Cassidy might be more hardcore in this movie, but I feel like the tone is going to be a little silly at times. And that's where this title comes from. Yeah. I remember when I went and saw the the first movie in theaters, I went with my wife. She's never read a Venom comic in her life. And I remember like hardcore Venom fans were like, Oh, th you know, this isn't a Venom movie. It's nothing, you know, it doesn't capture the essence of the comic character. And I was like, I'll give you that. Yeah. But my wife who knows nothing about Venom thought it was great. Right. So in that respect, it was probably really effective. <laughs> Absolutely, because we what we forget about sometimes as fans, if you gather all hardcore Venom fans up and have them all buy a ticket to the movie, the movie might make you know $50 million. So you need the rest of the world to go see it and like it. So to me, that's what that movie did. Uh, it, it got people who were like, oh, I know what Venom is or have an insulary knowledge of the character – uh, but then they saw the movie and they're like, yeah, I like Tom Hardy. And, you know, and the, and the movie was easy to follow. And it wasn't like, you know, trying to beat you over the head with any kind of message or anything. It was just like a fun, dumb action movie. And I think a lot of people just appreciated it for being what it was. So originally this movie was supposed to come out. I believe it was in October of this year. But mm -hmm. everything, you know, all bets have been off with, with coronavirus, COVID-19. Right. Basically wreaked havoc on the entertainment industry, movies especially. We don't even know when really when theaters are going to come open and let alone when they're going to start putting movies in. So recently, Matt Reeves, the Batman, moved out of its June 2021 uh, date. We finally know that Venom, you know, uh, Let There Be Carnage is moving into that date for Sony. Right. And uh, I think it's a perfect time. Uh, it's going to be really crowded at the end of this year. Venom probably deserves a little room to breathe. And it really it feels more like a blockbuster summer movie rather than like a holiday winter season movie anyway but it's good that we do have a date it's over a year away so so there they shouldn't have any problems the special effects should all be great the right. marketing plan, plan should be you know dialed up you know to the nines uh it's longer wait than we wanted but i think they they picked the right time yeah i think so too i mean obviously october 
was a moneymaker for them in the first movie, and they were trying to repeat that success. But because mm-hmm. the world changes, like you said, you have to adapt and you have to figure out what makes the most sense. Uh, I guess it makes sense to still release this movie uh, because obviously they're building a, a universe here. They have Morbius coming out in the springtime, and now they're having Venom come out in June. And then there's a new Spider-Man movie that comes out a month later in July, tentatively. I imagine they're not going to push that back but uh, because they still have plenty of time to, to get it done and make it. So I imagine that'll stay, may, maybe, but it would be great for me as a fan to get all three of those movies at once because they all kind of tie into each other from what we are led to believe. So it's, uh, I think it's a good thing to come out around that time. They want it to come out before Spider-Man, so that makes sense, that date. They took the Batman spot, which also makes sense because that means that already didn't have a lot of stuff coming out around it uh, because people were probably afraid to go up against the Batman. Uh, mm-hmm. So that helps them out there as long as no movies move in around them. And uh, and yeah, I think uh, even though if you follow my channel, you'll see that we've actually been putting threads together uh, that this movie might be taking place at Halloween because uh, I went to the set of the movie, obviously, in San Francisco that we can talk about here in a minute. But we saw people in Halloween costumes walking down the street as extras. And so uh, we ha- and there's signs everywhere that say Carnival of the da- Damned or something like that. So I'm thinking that maybe there's going to be a big moment, big battle, something at a carnival uh, that might, you know, th- these are just my you know expectations and theories. But uh, but it looks like the movie might be set in Halloween. So it would have been cool to release in October. But now that we're getting in June, I think it doesn't matter. I think the the draw of Tom Hardy and Woody Harrelson is going to make this movie a summer blockbuster. Now that we know that it's it's well over a year away, there was I believe it was two weeks ago, maybe it was a little bit less, but there was kind of a fake tweet out there from Andy Circus stating the Venom Two trailer is coming out tomorrow, and people got up. You know, everyone's in quarantine right now. Everyone's waiting for something exciting to happen. Right. That was exciting, especially for movie fans, comic fans. It turned out basically to be a hoax. Yeah, but you know, you you got a lot of uh, you got a lot of attention. People wanted you to find you know get the four one one on this uh, trailer that wasn't happening. Yeah, I so one thing because have I made mistakes before on reporting stuff? Absolutely, everybody does. So because I've made mistakes, I try really hard not to anymore. So it actually built up before the Andy Circus tweet. There was people out there photoshopping images of like carnage hands from different toys and then CGIing like a cage over it, like the cage from the first movie that he was in the prison in. And they were trying to say that was a screenshot from the first trailer. And my first reaction to these pictures were, hey, everyone, this is so stupid. Why are you believing this? There's no one in a theater right now. Why are you believing that someone took it? And they're like, oh, it's some guy in Russia. And, you know, he put it on Reddit and he said he saw he's, you know, he works for Sony in Russia. I'm like, no one at Sony in Russia is watching cuts of Venom 2 right now and checking out trailers. I promise you. Like, so I saw all these YouTube channels and and uh, and some websites that have much bigger followings than I do that are posting these things as gospel and saying these are actual leaked images. And that leads my small amount of subscribers coming to me. And not small. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're 2,300 almost now. So it, so we're, we're growing. But it's still, it's... Uh, you know, compared to those sites and those YouTubers, I'm a much smaller channel. And I have those people who are fans of theirs coming to me going, why aren't you covering this news? Why aren't you covering this? And then the Andy Circus thing happened. And it's like, it's like, guys, it's fake. And they're like, no, it isn't. It's true. And I'm like, it's not like it's marketing 101. You don't post a picture saying a trailer's coming the next day and it not one be an official image from the trailer. Uh, it's not going to be some whiteboard drawn image. And then two, uh, you don't delete it afterwards. And then everyone's like, yeah, but Tom Hardy does that all the time. I'm like, it's one thing to post a picture of Venom eating Spider-Man and deleting it for fun or a set picture and deleting it for fun than to market a trailer. <laughs> well, that's the thing about YouTube. It, you're you're living basically in a, in a click economy. So right. you have to get things that generate clicks. Obviously, uh, uh, leaked trailers and things like that are going to generate clicks, whether it's real or not. So sure, that's, how it's, yeah, that's why that happened. But you know, speaking of... The original movie, we talked a little bit about it. There was the cameo of Carnage at the end with Woody Harrelson. Kind of embarrassing. Not when <laughs> when my wife saw that that part, she wasn't like, "Ooh, who's that?" You know, right. She's like, "That was strange." <laughs> you know, almost reminiscent of the first time Thanos showed up in the MCU. It wasn't really a good representation of what he would be in the MCU. So I'm I'm assuming that that's not a good representation of Cletus Cassidy carnage in the in the this new spider-man venom universe uh, but he is absolutely going to be in, in the next movie you like you said you were on set 
you did see some things, you know, you, you, you saw the Carnival of the Dam, Carnival of the Dead, what you, whichever one it was. Mm-hmm. You know, do we know, know what the source material for this movie is going to be? What are the, some going to be some of the um, inspirations for the movie? Obviously, you know, everyone hopes it's Maximum Carnage. Sure. But is it, are there yeah. some other Carnage or, or Venom stories that are going to be, you know, lifted to, to be put into this? I can tell you what I saw on set because I talked about it on my show, but it's uh, but there are some things I do I did withdraw uh, that probably could answer some of those questions. But I would say, for as far as comic book goes, I'm sure they're going to pull some some inspiration from maybe a scene or two from Maximum Carnage. Uh, in Maximum Carnage, that's where we kind of learned about Cletus Cassidy uh, growing up at an orphanage called St. Estes uh, uh, Orphanage. And we saw Andy Serkis tweet a picture of that a while ago, a sign at St. Estes, and it was burnt down. Um, so what happened in the comics is that Cletus Cassidy, at a young age, at, at the orphanage, uh, killed uh, other orphans and then also burned the place down. And that was one of his first big acts of, of terror, but he was never blamed for it. So at the end of the first movie, in that really goofy scene with the wig, uh, even though that wig is probably comic accurate, it looked pretty bad in you know a lot of people's opinion on screen. So at the end of that first movie, they had that scene where you know he, he tells Eddie, like, hey, there's other bodies out there. And you can watch a fully uncut, because they, they cut some of that scene out, but you can watch the full version of it now because it's a special feature on the DVD. And, uh, and you can hear the extra dialogue, and you can hear Cletus say, hey, the, the government sent you to do an interview with me so you can find these bodies that they don't know about yet. And I'm like, oh, that must be a reference to St. Estes and his past crimes. That he... So it sounds like that from Maximum Carnage might come into play. And then also Savage Genesis, which is the the Mark Bagley, uh, David Michelini three-issue introduction of Carnage, uh, just probably without the Spider-Man portions. But uh, that's where Carnage was born. That's where he, you know, is offspring of Venom. So I imagine those two are probably going to be things they pull from, um, if I were to guess. And probably still a little lethal protector, uh, because we heard about a scene where there's a mugger mugging a woman and, and Venom might save her. And we were thinking of the scene in Lethal Protector where he rescues the lady and then pats her on the head and gives her her purse back. Uh, so a lot of people were thinking that scene might be recreated. So I would say somewhere in there and then plus just some original storytelling thrown in as well. Like we mentioned earlier, it's kind of come up a little bit, but they, these are really exciting times, especially if you're a fan of Venom, you know, Carnage, yeah. obviously Morbius and Spider-Man. So Spider-Man is, is uh, you know, it's a Sony uh, a movie within the MCU, but Morbius and and uh, Venom, Venom, Let There Be Carnage, are both associated with that same Spider-Man character. So they're associated with the MCU now, which is really exciting. And I think you are on to something. I think that they are building to a Maximum Carnage big tie-in event once you establish you know, these two characters. Obviously, Venom is established. But right. if Morbius takes off, and I think it's going to, I wouldn't see why it wouldn't. Maybe not like Venom. He's not that big of a character. Sure. But to have a finally a tie in in Sony's first big Avengers style, you know, kind of crossover movie. And I definitely think that's kind of where they're moving towards. And I hope, you know, maybe I hope the guys at the MCU kind of embrace it. Maybe, you know, throw a character or two over there and let, let them play in that universe if, if it's successful. Yeah, it's it's tricky because I would say, yeah, they might build up to like the third Venom movie, maybe will be called Maximum Carnage, but I just feel like they're building up to that in, as far as the Venom stuff goes. I feel like Sony's also building up to the Sinister Six because they've been wanting to do that forever, and I feel like that might, it, it'll be a, it'll be interesting to see whether that falls into the more the MCU side of things or the Sony side of things, uh, because I think the Sinister Six would be a great you know battle for Spider-Man regardless. But now, if you look at these movies, you could easily say if, if Vulture, because we saw a cameo of Vulture in the Morbius trailer, maybe Vulture is recruiting Morbius and and Scorpion to be part of the Sinister Six, and then you have Venom come in, and maybe Venom's one of the members that turns good by the end, you know, and maybe I don't know. So th- there's a couple different roads they can go. But as far as the title, Maximum Carnage, I just feel like it's probably better to save that if they do a movie that's more accurate to that title. I don't feel like this movie will be, and so to call it Maximum Carnage when it's just the origin story doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. No, no, but I just think that they're building towards that. I think that's yeah, why yeah. Morbius is there. I yeah. think that's why they're tying it into the, the Spider-Man that's actually in the MCU, because I think they're trying to build something up. And, you know, they're working with Disney in the MCU, obviously, but I think mm-hmm. they're trying to do their own thing with its own flavor. Obviously, I'm kind of digging it. 
not exactly completely true to Venom, like like, like I, I'm reading in comic books right now. But it was a fun movie. The first one was. It's a fun character. Tom Hardy's a good guy. I know you got a meet him on set. You know, he, he actually knew who you were. That was strange. Yeah. How the hell did you know who you are? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, things like that are weird. Uh, but, I mean, I met him before, like, when the first movie came out. I went to a screening of it uh, with uh, with my friend Andrew. Very low-key screening. Uh, not a lot of people there. And Tom was there with us, and he sat and watched the movie with us. And then after the movie, he hung out and met all, like, 80 people that were there. And he did, like, intro for my YouTube show and, and signed autographs and just the nicest guy in the world. But, uh, yeah, when I told him, yeah, I'm the Venom vlog, he's like, Venom vlog, no way. <laughs> and uh, it, it really, it, yeah, come on. Like, there's nothing. When you're doing an all Venom show and that happens, it's like doing an all Superman show and then you meet Henry Cavill and he's like, hey, I know who you are. It's uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy and awesome. So exciting stuff. Maybe people aren't very uh, happy with the name, but it, like I said, it's not the Phantom Menace. It could be worse. Uh, <laughs> but you know, moving forward, glad that we finally have a date. Obviously, yes. there isn't a new trailer yet. Of course, I would be expecting a teaser uh, in a few months, maybe. Yeah, maybe Might maybe be. in the in the summertime when it when it's about a year away from the movie mm -hmm. coming out. Yeah, I it's can like see it. Yeah, 20 teaser. or 30 second just to give you maybe a little yeah. two maybe seconds of, of yeah, the may, character. Maybe even point. a one minute trailer possibly too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, obviously it isn't here, here now. You had to quash all those rumors, but it, it feels <laughs> like you did it successfully. I know you were a little annoyed with it, but it feels like you, you got over the hump and, and you're back to covering Venom with well, no chips on your shoulder anymore. No, no. I mean, I, ultimately, it's irritating, but it's not like something I carry with me every day and I wake up and I'm like, oh, these guys, you know, it's not like that. But it's like so earlier when you're saying, oh, it's just clickbait. That's why it, that stuff happens. It's like, yeah, I know uh, that's why it happens. But what frustrates me is when you have an audience that big, I feel like you should work harder to deliver accurate information to them. I get that clickbaits get you the clicks and there's that game that people got to play, but I'm, I'm 37. I don't play games. So it's like, it's like, yeah, no, I, I believe in, if you're going to report on stuff, you got to do it accurately. So that's why most YouTubers just irritate me and why I actually like coming to channels like yours, because you guys have these really in-depth conversation where it is opinion based sometimes, but it also is based off of factual things you're reading and, and researching. So, uh, so I like more channels like this uh, as opposed to channels who are just like, Hey guys, guess what's happening today in Marvel news, you know? And it's like, Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's why we have to work harder because, you know, <laughs> if you're going to be more uh, more true to the truth and all that kind of stuff, you got to work a little bit harder for that. But if you make great content, the people will find you. That's why you have an amazing audience. I have an amazing audience and we're growing every day. Sika, thank you so much for joining me. Great conversation about uh, Venom. Let there be carnage. Couldn't be more excited. Me too, man. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.